Well, happy Thursday, Ramblings viewers. As you know, if you're on the East Coast, it is a sunny, sweaty Thursday. So if you're with me on the East Coast, I hope you have your AC on. And as we're enjoying our AC, we have a very thrilling episode. As always, we really are going to be discussing really the connection that comes with being an alumni here at Westchester. We might have heard it said multiple times. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And that story is more truer than ever as we start to meet our future guests. But before we get into the meat of it all, as always, there's a game. So if you're tuning in live, you have about 24 hours to comment within the comments to win some swag from Westchester. And it has a very 70s theme to it all. I'm trying to win myself. So if you have ever worked with anybody who is a Westchester alumni, comment that in the sections, at them if they have a Facebook, and you might just get a chance to win some Westchester swag. So let's get to the to the stars of the show. We have three fellow Westchester alumni who have a very long tail of connections that got them all to be working all together under one big team over at the Medical Shore Center. So I'm going to introduce them now. We have Cindy, Alan, and Mike joining us. And we're just going to get to know a little bit about them, their time at Westchester, and how they are all together now in the professional world. So, hi all, welcome. Hi. Hello, awesome. hi. So I know it might have been a while, but I'm gonna, you know, since there's three of you, I'm gonna go back to orientation days, you know, that first day of class where we do those icebreakers. And I just want you all to go around, just give me your name, where you're, where you're from originally, what made you go to Westchester, what did you study, and what year did you graduate? So it's a lot, but just kind of give us your overall Westchester introduction. Why don't I start? I'm Alan Beatty. Welcome, everybody. Glad to be here. Um, I, I actually got to Westchester through the music program. I'm originally from Easton, Pennsylvania. I knew I was, I'd was. i been in the band for a long time. I wanted to stay in, uh, in the band access. I knew I wasn't going to be a music major, but a lot of my friends from school ended up going to Westchester, and I was just, that was my first choice from the get-go. Um, got accepted, was going down there in the summer for band camp getting started right from the very beginning. Um, was a uh, freshman, actually all four years, I was a resident at Killinger Hall. Oh, wow. um, and for those that are on the, these uh, ramblings uh, and had been with Westchester for a while, you understand back then it was an all, the all male dorm at the time uh, with the uh, uh, knowledge that it was called the zoo. Um, <laughs> It, and it had a reason for that as the all male dorm. Uh, but, you know, it was a great, great experience for me to be able to uh, get acclimated to the college environment with the group of people that I ended up uh, being best friends with. Uh, the group of us from the freshman year stayed together all four years pretty much uh, in Killinger and uh, have, were all my best friends, you know, going through school and actually out of school. Um, you you know, had a great cool. head of hair. What's that? Great, you have a great head of hair in this photo. I just, uh, I, yeah, I wish I had that head of hair still. <laughs> uh, that's the problem with my hair. When it got longer, which it was a little long then, I had the bozo look, which means it just <laughs> curled out. There's nothing I had to do about that for the curls. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, you know, you look back at the pictures back then and it's like, wow, where'd that person go? Uh, but it, it, it was a great time. Uh, I can't tell you how much, you know, reminiscing with this group here around me today about our times back there has brought back such great memories that um, I, you know, I'm sure we'll share some stories today that we didn't even talk about before. And it's and very excited about that. Now, real quick, what instrument did you play in the band and what did you end up studying? Uh, I was a business major. I uh, played the trumpet. Oh, I, um, I, was, I wasn't I uh, was the lead. There was a lot of music majors uh, that were a lot, a lot better than me. But one of my thrills was uh, senior year, we did um, a Chuck Mangione song and I was one of the soloists for the song. So yes, uh, playing in front of uh, 60,000 people at the vet for an Eagles game that year was uh, one of my thrills of my life. Wow, that's awesome. Not many people can say that. So congratulations. Thank All you. right. Well, that, that was a good, strong intro. Who wants to follow that? I'll go ahead. Yeah, I like yeah. it. I'm Cindy Miller. I graduated from high school from Gwen and Mercy Academy in 1976. So I was looking for a big school at 56 in my high school graduating class. So for me, a big school was 6,000 students. So Westchester was really perfect at the time. I majored in communications 
Oh yeah, that's my my college graduation picture. That was my um, Susan Day Partridge family look. I, but, <laughs> I like it. I love the bags. I should oh, bring yeah, them back. Yeah. <laughs> really beautiful. So um, I lived in Sanderson Hall my freshman year, and then after that, I lived in Ramsgate for the rest of my college days. I graduated. Actually, I was a class of eighty, but I graduated in December of seventy nine, and. Um, you know, through college, it was it was great. I got really involved in my major. I was on the debate team, and my partner and I actually, my last year, were the debate champions for Westchester. I was on the forensics team. We went up to Penn State and competed up there. Um, on my time when I was not, you know, worried about studies and those types of organizations, I spent most of my time at the Tea Cows. They were all my great friends. I was in Delta Zeta. So we spent a lot of time at Jake's Bar, at the Rat. Um, there's my apartment back there was my apartment at Ramsgate. Um, you know, football games, tailgates, intramural sports, lots of great memories. Still stay in touch with a lot of people, mostly via social media these days, but great experience at Westchester. Do you remember your apartment number at Ramsgate? Oh my gosh, I have no clue. I, I just remember that I was I was like so happy that we were across. That seemed like a, a like a lake or a oh, river. At yes. the time, and it's like not even a stream. Oh, it's it's literally a, a puddle of water yeah, that's getting bigger and bigger, and bigger every days, year. Like today we would put our beach towels out and all like oh. lay out in the sun yep. out there and it was heaven, really. It did make it feel like you were in your own little oasis. I, I know, I I feel like um, I had a few friends, so I was curious if maybe you were the, the same number as them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was the brick one, the brown brick nice. apartment. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so Jake's was right up the street, and, yeah. you know, we spent time there. And then, you know, as I said, at the, at the Tea Cows, like, Greek weekends were mm -hmm. awesome. We would have all kinds of Greek competition, and it was it were good times. And you have a crazy story, but I don't want to, well, I don't want to spoil the fun. So everybody hang out and wait because she has a crazy story about the teak house where she was basically a firefighter. Um, and then we'll wrap up with, with Mike. So tell us, tell us about your story, Mike. Hi, Angelica. Yeah. Mike Smith. Um, I, um, uh, I grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania and, uh, graduated from a small Catholic high school. I think, uh, our graduating class was about the same size as Cindy's. Um, at the time, my, uh, my oldest sister uh, was in Westchester. Uh, she had just gotten back from Vietnam a few years back and uh, was studying political science. Um, I was considering the service. Uh, I think she just got back from Vietnam and said, I think you should probably not do that and uh, look, look at Westchester. So uh, uh, I came down there and fell in love with the place and uh, you know, started there in 77. Uh, I was undeclared at first. Uh, and then I uh, and then I chose criminal justice as a major. Uh, my first year, uh, I lived in Killinger Hall. That's actually where uh, I, I, I met Alan. Um, cool. A lot of good times there, as he said. Uh, it was a bit of an animal house. Uh, all kinds of different uh, uh, guys lived there: uh, band members, football players, baseball players, uh, everybody. So, um, uh, and as with Alan. The, the people that I met there are still my best friends. Uh, and uh, one of them is the uh, uh, godfather of uh, one of my son's kids. And uh, we, we, we just continue to hang out and, and be friends. So uh, it was a great time. Uh, I then went to McCarthy Hall, I think was, uh, was the name of it. I don't think it's there anymore. Uh, I spent a year there. And then um, different apartments, Church Street, 17 South Church Street, uh, oh. Walnut Street, High Street. Uh, I was there for several years, so um, um, got a job at the Rat, which was the uh, the local hangout. I think I started delivering pizzas to the dorms, which was uh, interesting. Few stories there, not as good as maybe some of Cindy's, but uh, uh, then I uh, graduated to cheesesteak maker and pizza maker, and then uh, eventually bartender. Uh, so uh, uh, that was my Westchester uh, story. I honestly feel like I've missed out on such a big Westchester moment because I was there when the rat was like a figment of people's imaginations. It was like this thing everybody talked about, but it closed right before right before I started. So I, I always get so upset when I hear about the rat because I wish I had those stories, but we had Jake. So kind of all yeah. balanced out. A lot of fun. Oh, I bet. Now, I know Alan and Mike are connected. Obviously, you live together. You were friars all throughout college. And then Cindy is now connected to the two of you because of 
because of professional. So talk me through how we're all here today, why the three of you sit next to each other now, how you all work together. Kind of walk me through the trio that is the Westchester group group at your company. So I, I, I've been at Shore for 31 years. Uh, so this has really been my home for, for a long time. Uh, in my role as uh, in human resources, I'm responsible for hiring individuals within the organization. Uh, a few years ago, we had a position in our human resource department where we were looking for a managed, manager level role and I was doing the interviewing and I was looking through applications. And uh, as I'm looking through the applications, I see this one individual who's been working in the casino industry for some time, has great experience. I look at the where she went to school and it says Westchester. And I'm, you know, even though there's nothing on there that basically says when you graduated, because we, we were not allowed to ask that question, mm -hmm. I'm kind of figuring out, I think she graduated around when <laughs> I went, went to school. So I, I have her, I have Cindy come in for an interview. Uh, and my first question to her, actually, I'll let her tell that part. Yeah, so the, the first question that Alan asked me, and I hadn't interviewed for a job in 22 years. I was the um, EEO officer when I left resorts, but, you know, had never changed companies. They are just, as we merged and acquired, moved around. So my kids were asking me questions for two weeks, having not interviewed. And I thought I knew every single question I could possibly be asked and before I even sit in the chair, Alan says to me, who was your favorite college professor? And I thought, who the heck asks you that at 50 years old? And, oh my goodness. But, you know, I immediately had an answer. It was Miles Martell. And uh, the story there quickly is that I was a research assistant for him. He was a speech writer at the time for the governor of Pennsylvania. And uh, he had asked me to research the possibility of uh, legalized gambling in the Poconos, and it was already legalized in Atlantic City. So that's kind of, you know, because of him is what led me to Atlantic City. I did that research and, you know, really loved the gaming industry and, you know, ultimately ended up there. Wow. So I ended up uh, high offering the job, Cindy accepted the position and has been with us doing a great job and advancing within yeah. the organization since that time. Yeah, so it kind of brought me full circle because when Alan said, who was your favorite professor? There again came Dr. Martell. And, um, you know, I kind of credit him for kind of my path as yeah. where I ended up. But now I am um, the senior director of strategy and development for Shore Physicians Group. Mm -hmm. So we are the outpatient portion of the, the hospital plus the hospitalist inside. So. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for recruitment. If anybody's a doctor <laughs> out there, I'd love to have you get in touch with me. We're a multi-specialty group um, and I'm responsible for that. Informatics, operations, marketing, et cetera. So it's, it's been a great career to transition from hospitality yeah. to healthcare. It's almost like it is a little form of hospitality as well. well it is. I mean, honestly, the word hospital comes yeah. from hospitality. Yeah, because, so. you know, even though it might not be as, as fun as the casinos, there yeah. still is a level of, of care and, and, you know, providing and customer service. So that's, it, you know, that's a great circle. That's great for viewers, too, to, like, think broadly, too. Like, what can this lean into something else as well? Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I'm I'll actually worked in casinos prior to coming here. Uh, you know, and the casino industry is a small industry. But the one nice part is... I loved working in the casinos, but the fact that we're taking care of patients in this community and providing that type of uh, caregiving is a little bit different than you know having somebody uh, gambling their money, you know, and, and earning earning a living that way. So it altruistically, it's kind of nice to have that feeling that you're you're doing offering a job and doing a job that is taking ultimately taking care of the community. That is great. I mean, two extreme opposites, but all great, you know, all and great. it's it's yeah. it's fun. So the other part is yeah. with, uh, meeting Mike. Um, we had a, a position open for a uh, revenue cycle manager, a uh, director of revenue cycle. Uh, we had at the time somebody who was doing consulting work for us. And, you know, we asked her if she had anybody in mind for that she thought would be a opportunity for a role with us. And I'll let Mike finish the sentence. Yeah, uh, I was talking to uh, this uh, mutual uh, friend of ours and uh, she said, why don't, you, uh, why don't you check this out? I had been in healthcare IT for, uh, gosh, 25 plus years. I started with a company out of Malvern called Shared Medical Systems, which probably many of our alumni uh, may have ended up at. 
Um, and then that was purchased by Siemens. But um, I'd been doing that for a while. I was consulting. I was traveling a lot. I was kind of tired of airplanes and, and hotels. And uh, our, our friend said, why don't you check this out? So uh, we uh, uh, talked a little bit about it and we uh, sent emails back and forth. And she said, do you remember an Alan Beatty from Westchester? And I went, Killinger Hall. Yes. So I think literally within days I was down here for the interview and I was in the uh, uh, the administrative uh, conference room and Alan walked in and he looked at me. I looked at him. It was just like old days. We actually gave each other the Friars handshake. Oh my goodness. And, uh, and the rest is history. I've been here seven years uh, and it's been uh, just a, a tremendous experience uh, working with Alan, Cindy and the entire uh, I'll call it family here at Shore. Uh, it's uh, it's a great place to be. That's awesome. Now, with all of your different departments, do you work together a lot, or do you just kind of get together for lunch and talk about Westchester? <laughs> no, we're we're not. I mean, we're over a thousand, about uh, twelve hundred employees, uh, but we see each other almost on a daily basis. There's okay. something interacting in regards to our uh, responsibilities on a daily basis. Wow. So I know I asked Cindy this earlier before before we went live, but so you didn't know either of them when you were in college, but you think you might have known. One no, of I, them. I didn't. I didn't know Alan. And, uh, you know, Mike always seemed familiar to me every time I saw him. <laughs> now we <laughs> <And> know. Then, <laughs> when we were, the rat. we were talking recently and he you know, mentioned he was a bartender at the Rat, I said, well, that's probably where I knew you from then, because when I went to Westchester, there were about three or four Cindy Millers. And in those days, you didn't have your picture on your license. So it was really easy to borrow someone's license and, and get into the bar. So I was I was in there mm -hmm. freshman year. I never, wait, they didn't have photos on licenses? No, no not no, back no. then. No, you just had, you had to show cool? your school ID, which had a picture. And you had to show your driver's license. So it was like a no-brainer. And, and I the Pennsylvania know every day. The Pennsylvania state license was really a, a piece of paper. paper. And, and people used to use a variety of creative ways to change the birth date and, and the bouncers at the bar, they knew every trick. So it was really kind of funny. Cindy got through, but, uh, but uh, yeah. I do recall probably Cindy too. Oh my goodness. That's I, I almost wish like maybe you had a photo where he was in the background and you know, yeah. there's like little moments that pop up, but that's, that's crazy. What a small little world. And now you're all together. So now that we're in like the professional cycle of life, you know, talk to me about just, just your time within within Shore Medical, you know how it's been, especially with this last year. You know how did how did COVID nineteen really impact your day to day in the office professionally, and you know how did you you know sort through that? Well, I, I can start with the physicians group. It was really crazy because we have thirteen outpatient offices. You know, it's multi specialty, so we have surgeons, uh, general surgery, plastic surgery, reconstructive surgery, neurosurgery, orthopedics. Mm -hmm. And then all of the, the primary care doctors and specialties. And on Friday, we talked a little bit about COVID. And on Monday, things were shutting down. People weren't coming into the office. Um, in two days, my team and I were up around the clock at my house, actually, for um, about 48 hours. And everybody was Zooming in and calling in. And we brought telehealth up in about three days. So it was incredible. I work with the most amazing team and the best doctors ever. Our doctors, our hospitalists inside the hospital had, you know, new protocols as far as communication with family and, you know, safety protocols. And they were unbelievable. They worked so, so hard. Um, you know, obviously some of the providers got COVID and the others covered them and did double shifts where needed. And I, you know, I can't say enough about the hospital system and the, the dedication of the staff and the doctors. I mean, this year just has to have been like a whirlwind of learning and developing and processing quickly. So, I oh, mean, yeah. it's just going to, even though it was horrible in the moment, it really does help you just keep moving forward. So thank you so much to you and your team this past year, because- we probably would have not been where we are today without people like you. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Yeah. Sure. Um, as uh, as the director of revenue cycle, it's kind of like a big word for a variety of different departments. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what is that? Uh, all of the places a patient might register, uh, be admitted, uh, the ED, outpatient registration, uh, admissions, you know, the, those places. So those folks report to uh, uh, directly up to me. Uh, our billing and collections team, our follow-up team, scheduling team, 
medical records. So all of them under that umbrella were directly affected by COVID. Uh, obviously, our frontline staff, uh, I can't say enough about them because where some of our team were forced literally to then work from home, they couldn't. And uh, they had to be here every day. And, uh, you know, they were, uh, they were warriors. And uh, so, you know, they did a fantastic job. And then the folks that had to move home. Uh, what a change, right? Uh, you got the, the kids running around the house and you've got to be on the phone and your computer. Uh, our IT team that made sure that all those folks were set up. Uh, definitely one of the most challenging year, year and a half of, uh, of my career. But as, as Cindy said and Alan will say, uh, we did it. And uh, you know what? It was one day at a time. In some cases, it was one yeah. hour at a time. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we're continuing to, uh, to ensure that we're able to take care of our patients, our community, uh, and each other. Uh, so, uh, so that's a little bit about how, how, that, uh, how that affected me. Impressive. Well, thank you. That's a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot to pack in one year. <laughs> and then, Alan, how you know? Obviously, when COVID hit, a lot of people were either out of jobs, looking for jobs. So, from your end, being in human resources, how, what did that look like for you? Well, it was a little chaotic, uh, yeah. to, to put it mildly. We we you know, as Cindy was saying, one day we're operating normally, uh, and then the next day we're having discussions about how do we right size the organization in an environment that nobody knew what that actually meant. You know, how long were we going to be in this COVID environment? Who would have thought back then that even today we'd still be dealing with what we're dealing with from, from the COVID? Uh, you know, we had to protect the interest of the organizations so that we could be continue to be here long term. But again, what did that long term mean? Are, you know, was telehealth now going to be more of what we're going to need to look at as we got out of it? So, we had to address the staffing issues, we, but we still also had to take care of everybody that was still on site and, and protect their interest. I also have the employee health mechanism. So now I have to worry about when somebody, one of our employees did get COVID, tracing that, finding out where did they get it from, contacting all the employees that they may have been around, it's putting in the quarantine uh, 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 principles so that we could make sure that everybody is safe and, 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 and uh, protected from whatever may have been out there. Um, you know, looking at that, looking at, you know, as simple as how do we get food to the people? You know, one of the things that absolutely was amazing for us was our community. Again, I love living in this community. Uh, we had probably a stretch there of two, three months where somebody in the community delivered food for the organization. That's great. Uh, and, you know, our, our big issue for us is oh, who gets the food this today? <laughs> you know, we wanted to make sure we div divvied it around and everybody got access and had availability to it. So those type of things were the fun mm -hmm. part about what was going on because those, you know, put a smile on everybody's face. Um, but, you know, we, we tried to keep the place going in a way that knowing it was very stressful knowing that it was very tenuous, knowing that we were putting our employees in harm's way, even with providing all the uh, PPE, the personal protection, you're still dealing with the, the patients who potentially could uh, have a negative outcome. And uh, as they both said, uh, because of who we are as an organization, uh, this organization thrived and, and was successful. And I think if you looked at the community as a whole and asked about what we've been able to do over the last year and a half, I think the majority of the people would say that, thank God we were here for them. Yeah, I could imagine. I mean, especially because that community is, is sm not small, but small. And to have such a big hospital and, and medical center right in the middle of it does does help tremendously. So honestly, big kudos to, to you and your whole team. That's that's a full year and a half that could take up a lifetime for some people. So, so thank you again. Um, and, you know, kind of, Obviously, college couldn't have prepared you so much for this year in a whole, but it definitely does have, you know, has some some stay on what, what you're doing now. And you could probably look back and a lot of the community that you talk about now probably started from when you were in Westchester. So looking at Westchester in your time, I do want to get into some of the fun, fun reminiscing that we were getting in earlier. And Alan, did being a pinball wizard help you at all this past year? <laughs> well, it kept me out of trouble uh, and it got me to meet some people, you know, having all the pinballs over at Sykes, mm -hmm. you uh, get to uh, meet the people who aren't from where you're from and start learning new names and uh, 
getting new experience by, by meeting these people. Um, it, you know, I got that within the first couple months of going down there. So I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing that I was spending more time than I should have with that. <laughs> um, but I didn't even know there was pinballs in Sykes. Where were they on the first or, or bottom floor? Uh, first floor, as you went up yeah. the stairs at first level, they, were, wow. they had a whole arcade of pinball machines up there. I say Westchester, bring that back. I want an arcade. Yeah. I like live very close to campus. I want to go to an arcade. So how does one become a pinball wizard? Like, did you win so many times or was that just like a, a name that was given to you? No, no, it was just one. It was, it was a tournament. You, it was, I think there was probably about 30 or 40 of us. And it was, you got paired up, you'd win one game. It'd be like the uh, NCAA March Madness. <laughs> it was a, block and you got whittled down to the oh. final two people and i ended up uh winning on the final with the final uh pairing the interesting part was uh tom who i competed against was also from easton and from the band in easton so i don't oh. know if that speaks about you know what we did in easton uh you know in our spare time <laughs> there's but, a uh, trend cool. you know, uh, yeah, uh tm was a, a friend of mine at the time so it was fun uh fun competing but to go to your point it did help me because I found being at Sykes, I found out more about the residence hall association about, you know, things that were going on, you know, that you could get active in. And, you know, I ended up being uh, an RA at, at Killinger. I ended up being, uh, I think the vice president for the RHA association. I, I don't know if RHA yeah, is still is, there, I, but the, I believe so. the resident hall association. Uh, so I, I really did get a lot. Of, I got into activities as a result of me just you know, going across the street and meeting people and talking to people. And then it also kind of maybe brought you to the Friar Society where you met, where you met Mike. So t Mike, tell me about your time within the Friars with, with Alan. Oh, well, it was, it was great. A great bunch of folks. Uh, I was uh, honored to be uh, selected to, uh, to join the, uh, uh, the, the club of the society my sophomore year, uh, where my current roommate at the time, Bill Eisenbray was a, was a Friar and uh, he nominated me. And uh, just met a, a whole bunch of uh, great guys. Many of them uh, we we knew through our classes, right? Mm -hmm. Through you know just interacting throughout the campus, uh, the ability to provide service to the community, uh, raise money uh, for different things was uh, uh, was outstanding. And just the social aspect of it too, right? Hanging out with Alan and, and all the guys. Um, I remember the football games, right? We had to sell hot dogs and soda and hot chocolate and stuff under. Barrel, Barrel Stadium, Stadium, right? Yeah. And uh, and then uh, we would, of course, uh, get together after the game and uh, make our way back to uh, campus. Yeah. <laughs> get together. Now, can you spot yourself? Can you spot both of yourselves in the photo right now? I can spot Alan. Um, I, I can't sure. spot Mike. I know I know he's there, but I can't find him. I, I think he's hiding in the back he's row. He's hiding in the back row, yeah. So wait, which one's Alan? I'm, I'm in front row. I'm kind of center. I was president that year, so they, oh, nice. they put me front and center on it. Yeah, he was the big goomba up front. Yeah, I was the one with the tie <laughs> that I couldn't tie right. <laughs> I mean, ties for, ties are hard. Even even now, I don't, I don't yep, know how that's many why I don't wear one anymore. That's like, it's a lot. At least women just get to wear nice necklaces and, and be free. So then, Cindy, obviously, there was a start of you helping people in college. I know earlier you were telling me about what transpired at the tea cow. Oh, yeah. So I definitely was not a firefighter at that yeah. time. I was down in the basement with probably 300 other people um, at a party. And someone said there's a fire and everyone downstairs, including me, just thought it was too crowded downstairs. They were just trying to get people out. And then uh, some of my friends at the top of the stairs at that time, I remember looking up and they were like, no, it's real. And then we started to see smoke and we we went out and uh on our way out, there were there was a dog there, an Irish setter that had just had puppies. Oh, so people were grabbing puppies and I grabbed one of the puppies and that dog, you know, eventually became my dog for the next 13 years. Oh my goodness. What did yeah. you name the dog? Shannon. 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 It was a beautiful Irish that. setter. But it was the it was the tea cow's dog that had had the puppies. And then oh my goodness. All of those guys moved into the basement of Killinger oh, Hall. Oh, that <laughs> hall, that poor Killinger Hall has been yeah. through <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So where was the tea house? I'm like, I'm trying to picture um, High Street. High Street. It was right on one High Street. Up. That's that's an old picture of it, actually. Wow. Yeah. yeah. One, one block up from what used to be. Well, it's not there anymore. Uh, McCarthy Hall, uh, right right there at the corner. And if you went towards 
the town downtown it yeah. was one block up on the left hand side just a bit up from phillips yeah just up from phillips yeah. yeah oh okay i know exactly what you're talking about wow that's a story if there was if i was ever in a basement and there was a fire i don't even know what my mind would go into i i definitely want to be saving a puppy so kudos yeah. to you it feels like maybe you were meant to be in this field for a very long time <laughs> oh that's wild so i know too mike you have like a huge family. Oh wait, Cindy, is that you in DZ? Yeah, it is. Oh, nice. Do you yeah, know where I think you I'm are in the middle, there? right there, sitting in the chair in the middle. That's me. <laughs> now, were you in DZ all four years? No, I think I was in my last three years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Greek Greek life became a big part of my Westchester experience. Mm -hmm. I actually found this. This is my <gasps> orientation book from Westchester, 1976-77, and I I remember when I was looking at it, I thought. You know, because I did go to such a small high school, you know, maybe it would be good to have that nuclear group of friends. Mm -hmm. And I found that in Delta Zeta. Mm -hmm. My roommates were, you know, from Delta Zeta. And, uh, you know, then, of course, the guys from Teak, we, we spent a lot of time together and socialized and, you know, formal Christmas parties and mm -hmm. tailgates. And it was really nice. It is nice. I think that's the best part about Westchester is that there are so many organizations. Yeah. So everybody does get their their nucleus, like you were saying, and you really can create your your little group within this within this big campus that is. So um, like the Abbeys and the Friars and DZ sure. and Teak. It's just it's nice to have those people and that group that you can turn to. So that's that's awesome. It makes me miss it. I miss it so much. <laughs> um, so then, Mike, you have a fat like you now have a family of rams forming, right? Correct. Talk, talk to me about your son and your daughter-in-law. Sure. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, uh, we're happy. We've got, uh, we're happy to have three children, three wonderful children. Uh, one of which is uh, in a picture there, Corey and his, uh, his lovely wife, Rebecca. Uh, Corey and Rebecca went to high school together in Phoenixville, but chose to go to Westchester together as well. Uh, they graduated together uh, and then uh, eventually uh, got married and uh, now uh, are the, the, the proud parents of uh, little Callum. And uh, so uh, he's another Ram. A, 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 a funny story is uh, uh, Corey was uh, uh, was uh, trying out for the golf team and we had to meet the golf coach at Sykes, uh, the community center, right? At Sykes. So I walked in early with Corey and I'm like, oh, wow, let me show you right, show you here, show you there. And, you know, I used to go up here and I played pinball over there and it's not there anymore. And and uh, the, the coach was waiting for us. And Corey's grabbing me saying, like, all right, Dad, enough reminiscing. Let's go talk to the coach. Um, Corey went on to uh, uh, be a, a member of the golf tournament or the golf team, a captain his senior year. And uh, uh, so it's a great story. Yeah. And he loved and Rebecca loved uh, Westchester as well. Great, great stories. I love that. Now, I know that they just recently had a child as well. Do you think he will be a future Ram? I'll probably leave that up to Corey and <laughs> Becca. Uh, but, uh, but uh, you know, that, that could be a very good possibility oh, for sure. What a fun story. That would be a great circle. So as we start to close up, I do just want to go around. You've all shared amazing stories, advice, reminiscing where you are now. So to really end this episode, if you had any advice for either an incoming student or a current graduate, what would be your advice for them? Uh, let me uh, start that and let me just give another connection here. Uh, we recently brought on an intern uh, from Westchester from the public health uh, uh, department. And um, Ashley has already uh, done such a good job. She's already been hired uh, to help us in a part-time role. So. It, you said earlier, somebody mentioned about, you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It, it's really both. You, mm -hmm. you have to have a baseline of skills and knowledge to be successful in life. But there is nothing wrong with knowing people mm -hmm. and setting foundations of who you've worked with and what you've done in regards to your past, because it will come forward at some point in time. Uh, you know, we joke in this area that the casino industry and the hospital industries are small industries relatively. Everybody knows each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me to find out about who, how somebody's done or what they've done and how they work, it's not that difficult of a proposition. But knowing that I've got somebody with a baseline of being from Westchester or some other connection is always a good thing. And, and if you can be active in what you do and show that you've got the uh, wherewithal to, to be involved and engaged, uh, those were all things I, I wasn't the best of students 
in, in at Westchester. Admittedly, I, I made it through. I you know didn't flunk anything, but you know what I learned and grew in was being active and being involved and understanding that I can help and influence things by being involved and in, and in, and in, and take and participating. So use what you're getting or use what you've gotten from school and leverage that where you can because it does give you a great baseline to to move ahead. I couldn't agree more. I don't know if uh, my yeah. colleagues here want to touch on that anymore. Yeah, sure. I, I would just say, you know, take advantage of where you are at Westchester. It's a it's a fun place to be. I had a great time. I don't know of another college where, you know, my two phys eds where one was ice skating and one was horseback riding. Wait, you had and ice skating as a phys ice ed? Skating, ice skating. Oh, I didn't know about a, the ice skating Ice skating part. rink was one. I was like, you know, really did not want to take phys ed when I started to take ice skating. And then my last semester, I took horseback riding. Amazing. I didn't know them. And, you know, small college. I mean, the, the guys used to come around to the, the dorms and the apartments and do, do Christmas caroling and, you know, Aww. fun and parties. And, you know, again, it's like these are your friends for life. You know, you have great memories and, you know, it was, it was a great place to be. I'm glad I didn't go to an inner city school. Westchester was beautiful. I loved it. Find your nucleus. I liked, I liked that advice earlier. That was yeah. good. I guess I'm going to use the saying that actually uh, uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, Becca, uses, not all those who wander are lost. I, uh, I went to Westchester undeclared. Uh, I eventually decided on being a criminal justice major, uh, ended up in healthcare, uh, and, uh, you know, 25, 30 plus years in, in healthcare. Uh, the, the story, I guess, there is Westchester gave me the tools to uh, not be afraid to uh, uh, to change, to make decisions, gave me the tools to interact, to, to work with people. And uh, and I used those tools and eventually, uh, you know, found a niche. So uh, for those of you that want to go to Westchester, uh, you don't have to know what you need to do right away. Um, and eventually it'll all work out. Everything happens for a reason. It's so true. And Westchester is a great place to kind of wander in a little lost because it really does help you kind of figure out who, who you're going to be after. Um, so that's great. And, and for those of you who are looking for possible careers, nice. see me. You know, <laughs> re reach out to the Shore Medical Center, Alan Beatty. You know, I'm more than happy to have conversations. You know, we are always looking for great people to to be employed here, whether it's in the clinical fields, nursing or respiratory or whatever, or in the administrative support areas. You know, this has been, as I said, 31 years of being my family. I bleed purple. I bled purple when I was at Westchester. I continue to bleed purple here. So it, it is, you know, been a great place and, you know, would love to have more grads uh, here working with us. Yeah. Just put WCU on the resume, right? Yeah. Yep. And Put in the put in the cover letter that you watch this episode. A little, a little nod, a little make go. make us feel famous. Why not? Yep. And then last thing, final thing before we wrap up, you know, just a, a little moment of pride. What makes you so proud to be to be an alumni of Westchester? My uh, just the fact that it was like a family for me. Um, I came from a not a small town, but a small school, mm -hmm. and just got kind of plopped there. And I'm proud of. Westchester because it, it, it helped me grow. It helped me mature. Um, it, 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 it gave me friends for life. Right. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that I'm so proud of it. And the fact that my son, Corey, uh, felt the same way about it. Um, friends for life that, that he still uh, talks to and, and hangs out with. So that would be it. It's a great place. It's a great place. Oh, I love it. Cindy. Yeah, I would say that I'm, I'm proud to be a Westchester grad because it was um, just a, a fantastic experience and it was a state school. I got a great education mm -hmm. and I didn't have to go to a private college. I went to a private high school. I was happy for my parents at the time. A credit was $300 a credit. It was $900 a course. I just looked in my book. It was $1.70 for dinner. So, you know, I, I feel like I'm proud to have gone there and gotten the education that I got at a value price. It was it was the best decision I probably made for myself and my family. Yeah, and I, I think my from my perspective, my pride was in fact what they described, but it continues to be what I see Westchester continuing to do. You know, when yeah. I when I see, you know, being the band geek that I was and you know all the accolades that the, the band continues to get. Yeah. When I see, you know, the state schools of, of 
uh, Pennsylvania, some of them struggling, and yet uh, Westchester is kind of the cornerstone of how to run a successful program, how to run a successful school. When I see the new buildings that are being built, when I see you know people graduating that I get to work with and the the what they come out with their education and the skill sets, you know, it's the core of what I achieved when I was there. But it continues to be a, the core of what I see the school itself continuing to be for the uh, for the area and for the kids that are coming out of it. Oh, every time I do one of these episodes, I get more and more and more proud of Westchester. So I love that. Now, before we before we all close up together, I am just going to go jump to a commercial break that I think you three will also be interested in hearing because when I heard the commercial break, I was also intrigued. So just a quick commercial break uh, for you alumni out there. You might be interested to know that the perks of being an alumni at Westchester just got a whole lot better with Perks Connect at no cost member benefit. As a Westchester Uni University Perks Connect member, you get exclusive offers and discounts on over 300,000 local deals, including dining, sporting events, movie tickets, concert tickets, travel, home, auto insurance, and a whole lot more. So register today, register today and start saving. If you would like to feature your alumni business on our Perks Network, just contact us. So, I mean, as a WCU alumni, I love a good perk. So I'm going to be hitting that up. You three can hit it up. So as we close up, any any final thoughts before before we say goodbye to our live viewers? Just thank you. We appreciated this. I, I thought it was intriguing the fact that yeah. the three of us being so close around the school at the same time, you know, and yeah. it's it just been a joy working with the two of them uh, and uh, having the opportunity to have this discussion and share our stories has been fun. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank even you. though I didn't go to school with you, I feel like I was part of your part of your year because it was fun to <laughs> reminisce. So thanks so much. Have a lovely rest of your summer over at Shore Medical. Have a great fall, and we'll hope to see you at homecoming. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Don't forget to comment in the comment section if you worked with an alumni for a chance to win. You have 24 hours to leave your comments. So the three of you can technically leave a comment if you want to and win. So be sure to log those comments, and uh, we'll see you next episode. Bye, everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.